What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? And today is Friday, November the 3rd, and that's right, you're getting one of those very extremely rare Omni Friday news uploads. That's when you know that the rent is due. Your boy needs to catch up in revenue because of all of those missed videos that I got in October due to that car accident, making it so that I can't make any videos. I think going forward, I'm going to try to start uploading Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday being for all you guys who like to stay inside and do nothing <laughs> just like me. All right, so this might be one of the big chunky wongies of the day that a lot of you guys have asked me to talk about. XQC is in trouble with the internet again because of his uh, antics. Chef Beck said uh, XQC drama and then, you know, show me a tweet where it says XQC is facing backlash for his response to criticism received after reacting to airstrike footage for content. The Dexter article links a tweet by this guy named Noodle Vivo who says, when I think about what this scum F degenerate content parasites look like, I don't think I could possibly create a parody more on the nose than this. And it's a picture of uh, XQC on the top left uh, reacting to the Israeli airstrike where it hits Gaza Tower after the Hamas attack. And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, people don't like this image. I actually have an interesting take when it comes to this. Not the easy, like, you know, like XQC is a garbage doo doo person because he, he might be, you know, but, <laughs> but honestly, I feel like this is actually the common reaction that like anybody would have after seeing this kind of situation. It actually would be weird if you were looking at this and like you were straight face. I think the issue that a lot of people had here was that people felt like he was profiting off, well, war. The thing though is that there are a lot of people who are making content around this. Uh, you know, there's people like Hassan and Destiny and a whole bunch of political YouTubers who are reviewing this, watching it, talking about it, you know, like nonstop. And, you know, like I think Hassan is actually doing like charity to, you know, certain places, not trying to reap the revenue from the situation, though the publicity is something that does put more eyes on him at the end of the day. But yeah, I think when it comes from XQC, who usually just speaks gibberish and no one says what he's saying and doesn't really provide anything of value and it's just a reaction content type streamer then it's kind of like bro like <laughs> this is not where you're supposed to be is what people feel but I do feel like XQC is entitled to, if he has good faith, to kind of try to learn about the situation. That's my maybe hot take on the situation is that I don't think we should clown XQC for trying to educate himself if it's in good faith. Now, and I haven't checked the actual VODs or the tweets or anything like this at all, so I don't know if that's what actually occurred, but yeah. However, <laughs> this response was absolutely freaking wild. Uh, XQC responded to that criticism and just said, huh, and showed a picture of him putting, uh, yeah, yeah, him holding money up to his ear. I've replied and quite literally said, you know, bro, literally letting money get to his head. Now, this is the... <laughs> I don't know why XQC is like this, okay? I think he feels like a victim or like a permanent target for everything because he's the number one streamer in the entire world and he's always under a lot of scrutiny. And instead of kind of taking accountability for a lot of the actions that people have basically said about him, the biggest one most really being his lazy reaction content where he basically watches and steals people's videos and doesn't provide any kind of value and then upload it to YouTube and then that's it, you know? Imagine me looking at this and being like, wowzers, <laughs> wowzy, wowzer, bow. And then that's kind of like the extent of what I'm saying. Yeah, then I'm stealing content. I'm pulling a sniper wolf. But like, excuse me, like, <laughs> even if you do feel like that's the case, so you're being wrongfully gotten, right? Like, this is the last place where you should be trying to reply in a situation here that people feel like you are monetizing war. It's it's tacky, right? This is there's there's people dying, and and to to to. This is it's real tacky. That's that's the only way I can say it. But it gets even worse. Quite. The uh, YouTuber we talked about a long time ago. There was some drama. We won't even get into it. We're going to look into the future. But he's here, my boy. He said, uh, your soul remains empty and ratioed him into like infinity with 75,000 likes. Basically saying like, bro, like... <laughs> You're garbage, man. That's that, that was one of the worst responses that you can make to the situation. In which XQC double downs and says, your bank account relates. Showing off his uh, watch, uh, flexing that like, hey, by the way, I'm rich. And you know, in response to all of your criticism, I am rich. And hey, by the way, what you're doing is really wrong and really bad, man. It's, it's almost soulless, but I'm rich. It's it's one of those tropes that you would see like on a cartoon or like a TV show, but like in real life, like 
<laughs> someone getting a lot of lot of money and then just becoming just a really really like money centric terrible person but it continues quite had said keep gambling again ratio him <laughs> and he said hey anything else showing pictures of him gambling and uh, showing these 25,000 again just trying to flex money that's that's all it really is and which quite ended the entire situation by saying glad to see the divorce lawyers are well paid uh making a uh reference to the fact that quiet's ex-girlfriend is currently suing him i don't know if it's still ongoing um for a common law marriage so that was the tobacco between these two but many many replies of a lot of people just being like dude you're heartless dude you're terrible dude you're garbage it's like extremely tacky and that's just a nice way of saying it anyway after that all happened here's a clip from xqc who talked about the situation a little bit more detail with his audience in real time chat i've been fucking caught live red-handed on air making money off of this shit the total the tally the video with the clip everybody hates and is very upset about that is not a big deal at all in the current landscape. Hi. Made it all a $21. Now look, guys, okay, I'm gonna be objective and honest with you guys, okay? I don't think that XQC was trying to monetize off this content, okay? I don't think he has to, okay? Again, you've seen the suitcase, you know he's the number one Twitch streamer, he has deals out the wooza when it comes to kick. I don't think that his goal here was to look at this incident and be like, hey, how can I make money from it? That's just my personal opinion. He's, he, can, he shows a lot of garbage and cell behavior, like nonstop, all the time. But I have to say that I don't think that the <laughs> pursuit of money for reacting to this video was something that he was trying to do. For me, I mean, like I look at the situation, I think like, yeah, you know, XQC is an easy target because he's literally putting a target on his face. He's just basically saying, hey, I have lots of money so I can do whatever the hell I want. And I don't care if you guys all get pissed off at me. I don't care if you guys try to cancel me because I'm rich. That's basically the TLDR. And when it comes to somebody like that, who's basically just showing their ass and saying like, hey, I'm I'm kind of garbage. What else is there to say? What else is there to do? I'm not going to, you know, jump down the rabbit hole and just continually call him garbage. <laughs> it's redundant and, you know, no one's going to disagree with it. To me, it's just kind of sad, right? That like you have all this money and you have all this like influence and you decide to just be like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you, you made it, you got it. And you can just literally just, you know, seek peace. You can do good. You can, you can relax, right? You can have good energy knowing that you and your family are being taken care of for, for decades. Right. And, and instead, you know, this is the energy that you kind of want to return with. I wonder what goes on through SQC's head. I don't know what he's overcompensating for, but it, it you know, I, I do believe in karma and I think he should be careful. This is not any kind of threat or anything like that, but I do feel like the energy that you put out, something's going to something's going to boomerang eventually and then no one's going to be there to, to, to hold your hand if life takes a turn that you weren't expecting I, just be careful is my opinion is just the energy that you put in might be some of the energy that that outputs maybe not now you know, but sometime it, it might come through. So anyway, that's how I think. Let me know how you guys feel. So physics says it keeps coming up, but Rosanna Pansino retracted her apology to Mr. Beast, swiftly followed by her retracting her retraction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, guys, this is going to be like one of the last updates that we have to do with Rosanna Pansino. If you guys don't know who she is and you haven't watched some of the prior videos this week, basically she's a YouTuber who has like uh, 10 million subscribers. Uh, she used to make all these cake videos. Yada, yada, yada. She came out recently talking about Mr. Beast. She recently came out to say that Mr. Beast cheated <laughs> in a video of hide and seek two years ago where uh, she was supposed to get third place, but Mr. Beast gave her fourth place so that Logan Paul can take the spot, okay? And she came out and said mental anguish. She was talking talking about like she was almost like an SA victim saying that she was a victim of misogyny and this is a Me Too movement or women's survival story. And then she would delete her tweets <laughs> saying, I, I changed all that. Never mind. I apologize, Mr. Beach. I should have talked to you in privately. And then I don't know if I gave an update since then. She came back and said, psych. I retract my apology. I redact my apology to Mr. Beast of not selling things privately. Based on recent new information and developments behind the scenes, I have learned that certain issues will never be handled privately 
they will only be dismissed or covered up private. This sounds like Rosanna Pansino has some extra information. Somebody, you know, somebody's talking in her ear and she's got some new information that might, that might incriminate Jimmy. That's kind of what this looks like. It says, moving forward, I do promise not to drop an ill-timed music video, completely poor timing, my bad, and we'll word things more clearly in the future. Never my intention to downplay anyone's experiences. I am just learning to find my own voice and to be a safe space for others. Anyway, I don't think I talked about this last week, but I made a reply to her prior, her first apology, um, and it I think it got the most likes on the replies, okay? That was not something I was intending to do. It just occurred, and it said, Hey, look, you spent the past 48 hours aggressively trying to ruin Mr. Beast's reputation over a game of hide-and-seek that happened two years ago, okay? Then you painted yourself as a victim of sexism even after you learned about Quackity. If you guys don't know, Quackity also got his placement lowered. Rosanna Pansino got the same treatment from uh, Jimmy. So my thing was like, look, Homie, I get it. You're upset that you got like cheated out of your your contest. That's fair. That's that we can all stand behind and say that sucks. If Jimmy's out here lying and fabricating stuff, we're all on the same team. But if you're gonna come around and start throwing around and saying like, "Hey, I'm this is a Me Too movement, women's survivor," you're being you know pointed out because of misogyny. When there's like a dude like right there, <laughs> he's like, "Hello, I I got the same treatment as well." I, I, that one I feel like like yo whoa whoa calm down pause okay because there are actual you know women out there who are being singled out and not over just a game of hide and seek. It's uh, it's a lot worse. Anyway, after she had did like. Her 22 23 campaign i said i feel like you're only sorry because you failed and to kind of explain that imagine someone tries to shoot you okay they they, they try to kill you okay and then they fail <laughs> then after they fail they apologize to the internet and they also say but yeah i'm also getting kind of death threats because i tried to shoot you you know that and <laughs> <laughs> but imagine if they did shoot you and then you died, right? It's one of those situations that I felt that if Rosanna Pensino kind of like succeeded in canceling Mr. Beast, then I don't think, you know, the apologies would have came through. I think it was because she received negative feedback from the majority of the people online where it was kind of like, okay, I'll step back, but also death threats are coming at me, which I don't approve of as well. But I don't know if you guys see what I'm trying to say here. It's one of those things, if you succeed, you don't really have to apologize. And if you fail, well, then you can just fall back on an apology and also kind of say like, yeah, please stop with the death threat. Regardless, uh, I got blocked. <laughs> so, and it's it's interesting too, because I just made a tweet. And I was like, yeah, she she blocked me, Um, you know, for trying to respectfully give criticism, right? This wasn't something where I'm like an incel, Mr. Beast, you know, defense person. I'm actually out here trying to defend women, okay? For women who actually have true Me Too movements and not trivialize the movement or play around a market which it felt like she was doing okay but yeah she blocked me and <laughs> it kind of is what it is all right why did she block me i actually not sure i think it's probably because uh, i was making reasonable statements because she left people like keemstar unblocked who was out here making fun of her and clowning her to the like the 10th degree but it feels like you know because I'm like a sensible person that's actually making like common sense type things and is getting general approval. It feels like I'm being silenced. It feels like I am, you know, being uh, discriminated against <laughs> because I'm black. It's what I would say if I was trying to pull a Rosanna Pansino. Anyway, jokes and fooling around aside, Keemstar had actually made a tweet yesterday saying that Mr. Beast and Rosanna Pansino have made peace. I facilitated a call with both of them and they both apologized after getting better understanding of each person's perspective. It was a very productive call. Hide and go see gate has officially ended. So yeah, Keemstar creating peace. Who would have thunk, right? Yeah, uh, it seems like the situation is over since then. Uh, Rosanna Pansino has then deleted her retraction of the deletes. I don't know. She she <laughs> She's deleted everything again. I'm just so confused. It's just a, a, an up and down thing that's going on with her here. But it's all officially over. The drama can be put behind us, I hope. This hide and seek drama has just been like absolutely wild. I want to say and reiterate, okay, any kind of death threats to any person, even Rosanna Pacino, even if this is something that might have come up because she was starting drama, it's, it's not you know, you don't do that. That's that's not cool. Yeah, you would expect that to happen on the internet, but yeah, it's not cool. And you should have sympathy for somebody who's getting that on the internet, re regardless. A little bit of sympathy and a little bit of empathy goes a long way. I don't know Rosanna Pantino's true intention, so I'm not going to try to make any assumptions. I'm just going to stay objective to the fact. And yes, for the last thing, guys, I'm not out here being a misogynist, okay? Like a Mr. Beast incel supporter, okay? I don't even know Jimmy like that. <laughs> I don't even watch his videos like that. I'm much more of a feminist 
supporter, okay? And I don't like seeing what appears to be, you know, people using the Me Too movement, trivializing it and using it as potentially a weapon or in a way where there are just so many victims who have suffered from so many more things. We've talked a lot about of women who have suffered really tragic things on this show. And I just, <laughs> I don't want to group them with this. That's kind of what I'm trying to say here, if you feel me. Anyway, you guys can let me know how you feel about this entire fiasco. I feel like this is not the end, though. I think it's more of a to be continued. Scotty said, I think the fact that his tour didn't get this negative until he visited Atlanta should tell us everything we need to know about that place. If you guys don't know, this is Keith Lee, okay? He's a TikToker. He's an ex-MMA fighter, and he goes around all these cities and rates the foods, and he does it with a dead pants face, and he says, hey, this food is really good. Eight out of ten. Mm, yeah, the wings, mm, super good, you know, seven out of 10. All right. Or whatever. There was a little bit of drama that happened earlier this week where he went to Atlanta and um, <laughs> he did some reviews where the service was absolutely terrible. Okay. He didn't even get in to eat because they wouldn't even let him in because they thought it was his family. And then, yeah, one of the companies, The Milk and Honey, started kind of making response videos to kind of like make fun of him. They called him autistic and, and yeah, Atlanta was wild and there was people sending death threats and all of that. So the update here is that Keith Lee basically went into detail where he's now postponing his food tour. Hey, let's talk about it. Every restaurant that me and my family go to, we were either A, invited by the restaurant themselves, or B, was told about the restaurant a hundred plus times from locals, from people who mention me, from people who email me, DM me. 99% of the time, I never go to a random restaurant. With that being said, my opinion was asked for. So many narratives being pushed and it's insane to me. But let's be honest, what else do you want from me? If I go to a bunch of restaurants and I have a string of good experiences, then I'm being too nice. I'm lying, the narrative is being pushed that my eye roll is fake and I'm lying just to help people. Then on the same hand, if I go to two or three restaurants where I don't have the best experience, now I'm tearing down businesses, now I'm being mean, now I need to shut up, now I need to mind my business, now I need to sit down. Again, I can't win for losing. It's like, okay, damned if you do, damned if you don't, okay? If Keith Lee comes out there and gives you a positive review, then haters are going to be like, nah, man, you working with the business. They paid you. You're in cahoots. <laughs> you jerk. And if you go over here and you give a business a bad one, you'll be like, wow, how dare you hurt black business, okay? You come up in here in our city and you give us bad ratings so that nobody wants to eat. How dare you? He's in a really crappy situation, which most entertainers and, you know, YouTubers and people who are really popular who do this kind of content is a damn if you do, damned if you don't. There will be haters at all spectrums waiting to jump on your ass. I understand everybody gonna have an opinion on the situation. You can disagree with me. You cannot like what I say. Completely understand. I'm okay with that. But when my safety and my family's safety start coming into play, that's where I draw the line at. Yeah. But what can't happen is when my family or the restaurants or anybody's safety start coming into play. It's absolutely overboard. Especially when I was asked to give my opinion. Because you telling me my opinion only matter if it's positive. Because if it's positive, you got my face plastered on the wall and you saying keep leaving here. But if it's negative, I need to sit down somewhere and you don't know who I am. That's crazy to me. It was so much positive that happened in Atlanta that was shunned by the negative. It was so many restaurants we was blessed enough to help. We went to an array of restaurants like we always do at every city. Yeah. I'm gonna be 100% transparent, 100% candid. Me and my family will postpone touring if other cities gonna be like this. Every review not gonna be the best. I'm gonna be 100% honest. If you want me to come, please understand, I will be honest. I don't mean no harm, I don't have no malicious intent. I mean that, and when I say it, I mean it. I think I would also, you know, be the same way as Keith Lee because, yeah, if my family's at harm. If people are sending death threats because I'm saying that your restaurant sucks, or you're, you, I'm over here just trying to be honest, especially when you actually ask for my opinion. Like, imagine, like, you know, you call me up. I'm Keith Lee, right? And you call me up to come review your restaurant. And then I come there, you know, randomly. You don't know I'm there, but you did call me up. But I come in like a ghost. And then you over here like, yeah, nah, I can't sit y'all because we don't have enough space in the, you know, dishwashers, whatever. And then I show up and like, oh, yeah, Keith Lee. Yeah, come on. I got a table for you right here. I'm going to judge you. All right, I'm going to call you out, okay? You called me to call you out. And now I'm calling you out. And now you want to send death threats and call me autistic? Like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> Keith Lee, one of the most unproblematic people on the platform. I'm going to need, you know, especially our people not to, like, make this man feel like he's endangered. Okay? Come on, bro. Come on. People be like, well, you know what you're doing. You know if you give a bad review, people are going to come and flood it with hate comments. What else do you want me to do? I'm telling people not to go and leave hate comments. I'm telling people not to leave negative comments. I'm telling people, 
make their own opinions. Yeah. You want me to lie and say I had a good experience? Or you want me to only post the videos when I have a positive experience? Then all of the videos I post is only going to be positive experience. Then the narrative is going to be pushing. I'm only trying to be positive, And we're going to end up in the same situation. And right. on top of that, I think something's getting lost in translation. When that happens, the restaurants that we are blessed enough to help won't be helped in the same manner because people won't show up in the same way because my reviews would be inauthentic. One of the reasons people show up the way they do is because they know I'm being honest and I'm giving my personal opinion and my personal perspective on the situation. Yeah. But if I don't do that anymore, it won't be the three or four hour wait times and now we won't be able to help business owners and we won't be able to give back to the community. In the grand scheme, that's what this is about. It's about giving back. It's about giving back to the community. It's about stimulating the economy. That's what it's about. All the other stuff, I'm a simple man in real life. As long as me and my family are healthy and safe, mm. we can live a comfortable life. I'm straight. I, I highly respect this dude, Keith Lee. I've, I've only been hip to him more recent. I knew he existed, but I've been watching his content more often because of the uh, the controversy. But I really like this dude's energy. But if I was Keith Lee, I'd be evil, okay? I wouldn't stand for it. I'd be like, okay, y'all want y'all want to bring it out? Y'all want to bring out the beast? Y'all want to bring out the MMA in me? All right, I'm going to go ahead up, team up with Gordon Ramsay. I'm going to go to y'all restaurants. I'm going to just cause a muck, a massacre. I'm going to say everything nasty. Y'all want me to be evil? I'm going to be evil. Yeah, sure, I understand with great power comes great responsibility. God made me for this. I'm built for this. At the end of the day, I just want to eat food, walk in my path. If you want to be on a journey with me, you are more than welcome. If you don't, God bless you. I'm sad that my guy is actually facing death threats and people are harassing him and his family for just going around and eating food. Okay, that's it. That's it. He's just eating. If Gordon Ramsay was going around doing this, everybody would be laughing, right? Because he, he he did, right? He went around different people's restaurants and called them idiot sandwiches and, and was like, this is disgusting. This is filthy. This is nasty. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing happened to him. He's chill. He became huge. He has restaurants all over the place. Okay. Everyone worships the fact that Gordon Ramsay is an asshole. But if Keith Lee comes out here respectfully saying no to your business or not nah, i'm going to have to pass y'all want to nah bro keith lee bring it out so guys here's a quick what you need to know huge freaking news and breaking as of last night justin ex crypto muggle sam bankman freed has been found guilty on all seven counts related to fraud and money laundering if you recognize this face this is the guy who owned ftx one of the big old crypto companies in the space back during the gamestop stocks and everybody was talking about bitcoin and ethereum back when it was all that, that everybody was talking every single day he was arrested for many counts i think it was like a seven or maybe 11 or 12 i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> this man was so guilty that the verdict actually got passed on the same day and not just on the same day apparently the verdict got passed within like three to four hours it was one of the quickest verdicts that has happened <laughs> when it comes to a case this large and this guy is now facing i believe up to 115 years in jail for his crimes involving all of his money laundering and schemes everything that you can think of when it comes to being guilty and, and you know finance and white collar crimes this man man basically committed it to be honest i feel like that's probably good for him because it feels like a lot of people who was involved into the crypto space just magically disappeared or died from weird you know circumstances so maybe jail is the best place for him to be but it looks like a lot of people are getting cooked uh most recently the the people who created the safe moon coin which was another kind of like pump and dump scheme is now being charged okay it happened a while when people were taking advantage of this crypto space the sec is taking a bit of time to basically get all these guys but they are getting their ducks in order and they're getting these goons it would be absolutely wild though to see if the sec ever comes after logan paul when it comes to all his crypto schemes if you guys watch this guy his name is coffee he's talked about all of these crypto schemes and these pumps and dumps and all the fraud that has happened in that space everything that he's kind of talked about the sec is kind of like trailing behind <laughs> you know probably gathering evidence and everything and it's coming to fruition so so yeah i'll let you guys know if anything else pops up in that space but dang yeah like your man is gone so real quick i'm gonna use this segment to give you guys some quick updates when it comes to like film tv gaming some of the big news that has been dropped and things you need to be looking out for this week and for the rest of the month as well paradx said invincible the boys and loki all having their respective important episodes on the same day okay so that's right guys invincible season two has officially dropped as of yesterday i haven't watched it i've been waiting i was i was in pain yesterday so i couldn't really watch any tv i had to go to sleep but when i get the energy i'm gonna you know try to go sit down and go watch that bad boy i, I want to rewatch the last one but i heard it was peak loki i've been watching i didn't watch it again last night either but loki has been really good season two but guys i don't know if you guys knew this but thanks to wolf phoenix 
letting us know, but the Marvel execs are considering pivot from Kane to Doctor Doom, which is absolutely wild. Some people are saying that Loki season two, the critic scores are very low, which in my opinion doesn't make any sense because I feel like Loki season two has been really good, like really good. And I actually feel like Kang, aka Jonathan Majors, is a major reason why it's been performing well. He's a great actor. I think him as Kang is really good. Now, don't get me wrong. I would love to see me some Doctor Doom, but if you guys don't know, Jonathan Majors was basically in a lot of uh, heat because uh, one of the girls that he was dating came out and said that he was abusive. Um, I believe since then the charges got dropped or maybe flipped, but he was proven innocent. And I think actually charges against her later came out. I, I, I don't know the details, so don't confirm or deny that. You guys can verify for me. I'm too lazy to look it up. But that's why he was in a lot of hot water, and that's why people are saying that, yeah. But in my opinion, I've watched both Loki and I've watched Ant-Man, and I felt like Kang was really good. His acting and his appearance was really good. <laughs> so I don't know why people are coming blaming him for the, the, the bad reviews on Loki. I don't even know why Loki Season 2 is getting bad reviews, because I felt like it's good. I love Ouroboros. Oro, 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 Boro, so whatever his name is i like almost all the characters on the show it, it's it's a fun watch so i'm kind of confused when the critics are saying here and gaming guys boys where are we dropping because the og fortnite is officially returning okay you guys know fortnite it's the the game that collabs with everything and everyone having a cameo appearance from every creator and freaking mr beast and freaking like the rock and <laughs> every person that you can think of any anime any game basically fortnite has it they've evolved so much with this game where you can basically run and fly and shoot and, and swim and you know it's crazy how many seasons have gone well they have officially returned everything back to the og fortnite which was top peak i want to feel like in terms of gaming and entertainment when fortnite came out i think that was one of the biggest moments that's when ninja was going wild and as of today november 3rd where are we dropping we're going back to season one and literally over 3.5 million people are currently playing fortnite chapter one it's 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 banging, it's booming, it's a hit. Like Fortnite just does not miss. And also in gaming, Heather DeBoer said, yo, Star Ocean, the second story remake came out today and it's absolutely awesome. Guys, I don't know if you guys ever watched my old laid omnis, which I'm working on something in the background. I might show you guys something. Nah, I'll show it to you later. But if you did watch some of my old videos, I had this song that played in the background that was on loop. It actually came from this game. <laughs> and it's gotten remade, the second story are launch it's amazing rpg i i hope that if i replay it that it still makes me feel good like i played it like back in the day but it was one of my favorite rpg star ocean 2 i think is my favorite star ocean game of all time and i think it's the most highly acclaimed of the entire series and also in gaming dude i feel like this is like the best year for games in terms of being a video gamer not so much if you're making video games it might be one of the worst years if you're a developer or your person that's helping to make video games this is a shame that simultaneously one of the best years for gaming and one of the worst years for people who make video games but said omni man's mortal kombat trailer though so omni man from the show invincible is in mortal kombat him and also the all the big one is homelander from the boys but oh my god okay i don't even play mortal kombat but if you look here you can see omni man holding this dude up and you probably know what this scene is from i cannot play the whole video because youtube is real wow when it comes to like fatalities and mortal kombat and you might not want to see the blood and gore too so I'm trying to keep us all safe here and monitor but just to show you the next clip you can see right here, Omni Man is holding this dude right here up to a train that's coming forward. It's the exact same scene from Invincible where it's absolutely freaking wild. And last but not least, I'd like to ask a couple of like personal 1v1 questions that you guys like to ask me. Yo, she said, hey, just want to know how you're holding up, Omni. How's your body doing? Did you eat today, Omni? So no, I didn't eat. <laughs> I don't actually eat breakfast i uh usually do fasting i usually eat between a window of like 2 p.m and like 8 to 10 p.m i might need to change that dough with the injury but uh i'm 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 i'm, I'm struggling okay i'm gonna be completely honest with you guys i'm it's, it's rough. I never realized how terrible chronic pain could be. Like, I knew it was bad, right? Okay, I didn't say like, oh, chronic pain is not that bad. I knew it was bad, right? But I didn't know that like after a while of feeling pain, I don't know if you can tell like my eyes is baggy. I didn't realize that the, well, some of the, one of the worst symptoms of chronic pain outside of the pain itself is like the mental 
toll that it takes on you from not having a lot of sleep, from not being able to rest, to not being able to enjoy daily things, to, to things that should be easy being hard. The combination accumulation, it, oh man, it's rough. And uh, I just want to do my best to recover, but you know, that future is uncertain. So I will say that I'm I'm doing not so good, but I'm doing my best to stay positive. I feel like when I make content with you guys, it helps me to uh, feel like that I can keep moving forward. I feel good when I make content. So you'll probably see a lot more content from me because, you know, I don't know how long I can do this if things go south. So, you know, just kind of keep me in your prayers and just, you know, keep on looking at me. Look out for me, y'all, and I'll keep you guys posted on this. Hopefully... You know, uh, things change for the best. But all right, guys, this is all I have for today's video. If you made it to the end, do me a favor. If you don't mind, just leave a like. It's an attendance record. It lets me know that I kept your attention. And subscribe again if you haven't already. I'm hoping to kind of grow the channel. I need to work on some marketing strategies, okay? I'm tired of being at like 300,000, okay? I, I want us to hit 1 million. I feel like there's got to be a way. I'm doing something wrong, okay? Maybe I need to make better videos. Maybe I need to do better marketing. I might be doing something wrong. I need to figure it out because I do want to get to those numbers eventually because I want us to grow and grow and be successful. So yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Have a great weekend. Stay safe out on the streets. Brush your teeth because if you don't, well, you know, gingivitis, you'll get all this plaque and your gums. You don't know it either. You won't know it until you talk into this girl's face and this girl likes you and you say, hey, how are you doing? And just whew, bad breath. And then all of a sudden, this woman who was going to be your wife is going to basically date your friend. It's over. You lost her just because you have bad breath and halitosis. So please, homies, brush your teeth and floss, okay? And then use the mouthwash and then you won't lose out on the opportunity of finding your wife or your husband, okay? So, <laughs> I'm serious though. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. Peace.